Oh, Windows. The operating system that you either love to death or hate with a passion. No matter your preference, it's become one of the most popular operating systems in the world. Starting out as only a 1.5 megabyte operating system, it's gained a bit of weight since then. Fast forward to 2024, we're up to Windows version 11, which is super clean and in my opinion, very aesthetically pleasing. But under its aesthetically pleasing hood lies a bloatware filled system with unnecessary apps and processes running in the background. I have some pretty cool tools for Windows that I want to show you so that you can keep enjoying your Windows install. Now before we get into any of these tools, I wanted to tell you about a little trick that you can do inside of the Windows 11 installer. If you select the world option for the region, you don't get any of the third party applications that Microsoft puts into the OS, but you will still have the default Microsoft applications. We are going to take care of those later. Also, you can deselect all of the Microsoft first time setup BS in Rufus when creating a bootable USB drive. Now, the first tool that I wanted to cover really is the best all-in-one tool for debloating Windows, and it really does just take one command. So first thing we're gonna do is open up PowerShell, and we're going to run that as an administrator. Now, once you've got this open, make sure that you copy and paste this command here. And once you run this, the Chris Titus tool should pop up here. And this is a live application, so you don't have to worry about installing anything onto your computer, making more bloatware. So once this is done, this is just going to leave and never be on your system again. Now, this first tab here is called install, where you can install or upgrade selected. So what we can select here are a whole bunch of applications. I've already went through this, so I don't need to really install anything from here, but this window is resizable just in case you need a little bit more room to work here. We have browsers, communication apps like Discord, um, Hexchat I've never heard of, but they got a whole bunch of them, Skype if anybody actually uses that anymore. We have development applications like um, Go, Clink, Anaconda, uh, OpenJDK, a whole bunch of stuff here. Any document managers, game launchers. We have Microsoft tools like .NET Runtimes, Power Tools, which is a really cool one, which I do recommend and I actually am using right now. A whole bunch of multimedia tools, Pro Tools, Utilities, just a whole bunch of stuff in here. And I definitely recommend installing stuff this way because you don't have to click through those, you know, next, 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 install menus. This will just download it through the PowerShell and make it so much more simpler for you. Now, also what you can do here, you can get installed and that will go ahead and check these boxes for what you actually have installed on the system. There we go. It'll show everything that I have installed here with these little check boxes. And you can just run upgrade all, which I'm not going to because I've already run this. So I know that all of my stuff is completely up to date but you can just select any applications that you do have installed or have installed from here and just upgrade them all from right here. Moving on to the next tab, we have tweaks and these are really, really nice. And I do recommend creating a restore point before you do anything here. And we can delete temporary files, which I do recommend clears up a little bit of that space that you just might need for something else that's just being taken up by temporary files. Disabling telemetry is a big one. Telemetry is, um, well, let's just hover, hover over here since uh, it says this will lock many edge browser settings. Microsoft spies heavily on you when using the edge browser. Essentially Microsoft spying, it's just uh, a way to phone home. Uh, about any, you know, updates or anything about the device that Microsoft wants to know is what telemetry would be doing. So I definitely recommend turning off or disabling telemetry in here. I would also, going down that same vein, recommend disabling activity history. Um, game DVR doesn't really do anything unless you're, you know, part of that Xbox crowd, which not a lot of you guys left is there. <laughs> and unless this is a, you know, production deployment, you should disable home group, really doesn't do anything. Um, definitely if you're using a uh, laptop or, you know, even a desktop nowadays, they still track your location. So definitely recommend turning that off. Teredo, almost nobody uses IPv6, so I would recommend turning that off. Wi-Fi Sense is just another way to triangulate your location based off of um, Wi-Fi devices. So again, turn that one off. Enable in task with right click. I do like turning this one on. It just makes it a little bit easier. So you don't got to go digging through the task manager to end tasks. I would definitely run the disk cleanup. You can choose to upgrade to PowerShell 7. I personally have. You can set hibernation as default for laptops. Um, wouldn't really do that for desktops or anything. There's really no need. And I would recommend setting services to manual. That is a huge one. Because as you know, when you typically install Windows 11, there are a hundred or so active, you know, services running in the background. I've seen, um, when I run this set services to manual, it takes it from that 100 plus down to about 70 or 80. So this is huge for freeing up some resources for your device. Now these advanced tweaks don't really mess with them unless you know what you're doing. And I personally use Adobe applications. So I ticked the Adobe network block and Adobe debloat just so I uh, don't have all that 
crap from Adobe on my system, and I know that there's some controversy going on with Adobe. I don't care. I'll still use their products because I don't pay for them. That's why I need the network block. <laughs> and uh, I do disable IPv6 just because I don't use it. Uh, another huge one, disable Microsoft Copilot. So as you may have seen on some devices down here in the corner, you will have Copilot and I just personally don't like to use it. Um, so yes, this disables Microsoft Copilot AI built into Windows since 23H2, which is, I don't think it's the most recent, but many people should be on this one if they're staying up to date on their system. But the rest of these don't really mess with them unless you dual boot, then you wanna set your time to UTC. Uh, like it says there for dual boot, but not really many people do that. So if you are one of those people, uh, make sure that you tick that. But I would not, like it says here, not recommend getting rid of the MS Store apps, Microsoft Edge, even though, you know, a lot of people say it's bloatware, doesn't need to be on the system. I agree, but just leave it on the system. Just, you know, get rid of the pinned items, but leave it on the system because it can break some things if you remove Microsoft Edge. And personally, I like to remove OneDrive just because I don't use it. And you want to run the run OO shut up because that just disables a lot more of the telemetry stuff. The customized preferences over here, I like to put on dark theme. I keep Bing search off in the start menu. Don't ever use it. NumLock on startup, I like having that on personally because I do have a numpad. I'm, I'm one of those weird people who like the numpad, so I like to leave that set, uh, setting on. I'm um, show file extensions. I just like to have this because um, I deal with a lot of files on my computer, um, you know, like video files, picture files. So I like to know what they are. Um, that's just a personal preference for me. I do like the um, snap windows. I do like the assist flyouts and the assist uh, suggestions for those uh, screen snapping um, applications. And uh, I always keep mouse acceleration off. A lot of this stuff down here, I just keep off because I don't ever use it personally, but you can go through here and select the things that you would like to uh, keep on or enable or disable. And for lower end hardware machines, like maybe an old laptop or like an old Dell Opti Optiplex that you may have, I would recommend the Ultimate Performance Profile. It just gives you a little bit more uh, room to uh, to use the applications that you might normally use that may take up a little bit more resources. Next, we're gonna go to the Config tab where you can install these uh, features here. All of the .NET Framework 2, 3, and 4, you can enable your Hyper-V virtualization, um, legacy media, uh, NFS network file system, lots of good stuff here. I usually don't select stuff here. If I were to select anything from here, it would probably Probably just be the .NET frameworks and uh, probably the Windows subsystem for Linux because if you guys uh, you know I've watched my other videos I do a lot with Linux so I may need a subsystem so that's just for me personally but I'm not gonna do anything here since I have run through this before on my system so I'm just going to leave this page here so um, you guys can go through this uh, however you would like and here we can configure our Windows updates we can have it um, default out of the box settings, so you'll always get those most recent updates if that's what you have opted in for. Security settings. This is, you know, when you deploy a machine in a production environment, usually businesses like to hold off the updates just to know that things won't break. So that is kind of what the security settings is trying to do here. Or you can just completely disable all your updates, which it says here, not recommended because you will fall behind on those security patches and your computer will be more susceptible to attacks or botnets or anything like that. So I do not recommend, like it says here, disabling updates. Make sure that you keep those on. Just be wary of those updates and what comes along with them, I would say. And we have the micro win tab here, which lets you create a custom Windows 11 image, which may or may not be a video that I make going over this page. So stay tuned for that if you would like to see that. Don't know if it's coming or if I am willing to do that, but <laughs> um, get subscribed for that. But once you're done with the Chris Titus tool, that really is all that you need for the basics of debloating Windows. But if you wanted to go a little bit further and get rid of those Microsoft applications, like I said, we're gonna need that second tool. Now, the second tool I wanted to cover in this video is specifically designed to manage default Microsoft applications. And this is a PowerShell script so that you can remove all of those Microsoft apps all at once so you don't have to go through and remove them one by one. The script is called AppX Uninstaller and it's actually written by Theo Joe. But this one is a little bit more involved than the Chris Titus tool, but it is completely just as effective. So the first thing that we want to do is open up PowerShell again as the administrator. So what you'll wanna do is go ahead and wherever your uh, AppX Uninstaller is, um, just go ahead and right click and copy as path, which I will leave the download links for all of this stuff down in the description for you guys. And then we'll go into our PowerShell and we'll control V and it will have these uh, little brackets at the end or I don't really know what you would call those quotes. 
and then you'll just want to erase those and run it which for me is going to go ahead and run because I've set my execution policy but if it gives you guys an error we will go ahead and go out of here it might look something like this it won't exactly say this error uh, but we'll go ahead and let's see here you want to go ahead and set execution policy execution policy remote signed scope process and that should allow you guys to go ahead and run this command here and i'm gonna go ahead and run once and it says please create a text file called list.txt and then copy the names of the packages you want to install into it and it says do not install any packages if you're unsure of their function so this will let you pretty much uninstall anything so even if it is very important to windows it will still let you uninstall it so please go through this do as it says and create a list.txt and only get rid of things that are not essential to the system. So I'm going to go ahead and hit new text document and we'll name it list. And uh, I, like I said, from the Chris Titus tool, I do have my um, file extensions on. So it does say list.txt. It might just say list for you guys. We're going to go ahead and look for, let's see here, something that we do not need. So I'm going to use phone link as an example here. I cannot just uninstall it from my system at all i don't ever use phone link it is not essential to the system so i'm gonna go ahead and find phone link over here okay so i've gone ahead and found it here so i am going to control c and we'll open our list.txt and we will copy that in there control s make sure that we have that saved we will go ahead and press a key to continue and it looks like list.txt is not found create it in the same directory as the script add the packages you want to the ins uninstall okay we are actually in the system 32 directory which is why it could not find it so i'm gonna go ahead and change directories okay so now that we are in the desktop directory i'm gonna go ahead and run this one more time we're gonna go ahead and hit r for run once for me personally and now it should see that list.txt over there and it has ran the operation and let's go ahead and see here once we go down to p in this list you can see that our phone link application or your phone whatever windows likes to call it is no longer there so yeah like i said just go through the just go through here and see if you can find anything and make sure that you google before you do anything make sure that you are creating system backups for everything but you'll just want to go through here and copy these and then paste them into your list.txt and then just go ahead and run the script and it will go ahead and take care of those Microsoft applications for you to de-bloat your system even further. And there are custom Windows 11 ISOs like Tiny11, Revy OS, and Atlas OS, but I just wanted to talk about and show these tools because not everybody's super comfortable with these custom OSs. So I just wanted to keep it simple for the sake of this video. But if you guys did enjoy, make sure that you leave a like and subscribe. It would help me out a ton. And um, yeah, leave me a comment on uh, anything else that you guys would like me to cover and I will see you in the next video.